So last week I built an all-white gaming PC as a personal system of mine for my home office. And I told you guys in that video that I was gonna build a second PC to go alongside it because there's technically two setups, two desks in that office. And today I'm building that second rig, which is gonna be in the same case, the 4000X from Corsair, although it's black because instead of doing an all-white PC today, we're gonna go the opposite route and do an all-black theme system. Of course, it's still gonna have RGB. I've got these LL20 series fans from, uh, from Corsair as well. Uh, same fans that I used in the white PC, except they were white. But everything else is pretty much different. All the other components, we're gonna do a different platform. In fact, it's gonna be Alder Lake, my very first Alder Lake DDR5 system. So I'm super excited. In fact, why don't we go ahead and pick out the rest of our parts right meow, starting with the CPU, which I already know is going to be the Intel Core i9-12900K. Oh yeah, here we go, baby, here we go. 16 cores and 24 threads. It's kind of an odd configuration, but uh, of course with Alder Lake, Intel's going with their performance and efficiency cores and a completely different lithography than what we've seen previously. But that is gonna pair very nicely with the, 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 this board, this board, because it's the only DDR5 board I actually have on hand right now, which is the Asus ROG Strix Z690E Gaming Wi-Fi. This board is primo. A Parimo board. Okay, so this is gonna be pretty damn sweet. This is actually gonna be a slightly higher end build, in fact, than the all white PC, which if you guys remember had a Ryzen 9 5900X and an RTX 3080. I, I already know, in fact, that uh, this is gonna outperform the 5900X. We've already seen the benchmarks and stuff, and I believe I have a faster graphics card that I can use right now than, uh, than the RTX 3080 that was in the white build. But next up, we should do memory. We'll just kind of go in order here of the main components for memory. No, this is SSD. Uh, memory, do, 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 which one was I think I have a few DDR5 kits on hand, but because this video is proudly sponsored by Kingston, thanks Kingston for, for sponsoring this video, we're gonna use Kingston RAM, which I believe is this kit right here. This is their Kingston Fury kit, beast. Beast, it's beastly. We have a 32 gig kit here with 16 gigabyte modules. So there's two of them in dual channel and we have a speed of DDR5 5200. 5200 speed, GB. That is blazing fast, much faster than the average speed of a typical DDR4 kit, which most users probably get around 3200 or 3600 speed kits. Of course they go higher than that, but this starts at 4800 speed and it looks like Kingston gave us the faster kit of the two, which uh, again is 5200. We have CL40 and it's 1.25 volts. That's slightly lower than the 1.35 that was on DDR4. And then we also have XMP 3.0, Intel XMP 3.0 certified. And XMP 3 actually offers a, a new overclocking spec that has two new profiles, customizable profiles for speed and timings. And you can actually save those profiles uh, on the fly, which is pretty sweet. This kit also has Ondai ECC. I don't believe it's advertised anywhere on the box, but Ondai ECC essentially helps you maintain data integrity for more stability when you're overclocking. So obviously that's really great if you're the type of user who likes to push your system to its absolute limit. And of course, this is fully certified and uh, qualified, I should say, by all of the major um, motherboard manufacturers. So Asus, Gigabyte, ASRock, MSI, pretty much the vast majority of, of motherboards uh, that uh, most users would buy. So we're good to go there with our ROG Strix board. Boom. And then next up, SSD. Once again, sponsored by Kingston. So let's go with a Kingston SSD. I believe, of course, of course here. Is this this one? Yes, the Renegade, two terabyte. Two terabyte Renegade. This is PCIe Gen 4 NVMe M.2. And that should be plenty for our needs. We're not gonna be doing much on this uh, system other than gaming anyway, so two terabytes is perfectly fine. Next up we have power, so let's just do the power supply, which, oh gosh, which power supply? I don't know, half of these boxes are empty, so I never really know which one to pull. We don't need 1200 watts. I'm thinking more 800 or 850. I believe this is empty. Deep cool DQ 850, this is a good unit, but I believe this is also in another system right now. We have uh, one of these NZXTs. Is this, is this full? Oh, it's, yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a unit in here. What a unit, E850, digital power supply integrates with the cam software and stuff if you're into that so we'll just use this that should be good and then we also need a cooler let's get a cooler for our 12900k let's see what do we do what do we do here uh the arctic liquid freezer this is actually in my n elite build right now we have uh, this guy that's a 240 i want something a little bit more beefy because uh, the 12900k boosts up to 5.2 gigahertz and i may potentially overclock it even further just to have fun with it because it's a new cpu and it's exciting so we want something a bit more beefy like mm, this Corsair H150i Elite LCD. This is a brand new cooler, which again, I have not used this part either. This is a 360 millimeter liquid AIO and that should be good. Uh, what, do we, what else do we need? We need power supply. No, no, no. We got power supply. We need GPU. Is that the last thing we need? Okay. GPU and Asia horse sleeve cables. I believe these are black. 
we'll figure it out later. And our graphics card. Asus actually sent over a big boy recently. This dude, RTX 3080 Ti, ROG Strix Gaming, and it's the liquid cold one. They asked me if I wanted the air cooled or liquid cooled one. I was like, obviously the liquid cooled one, duh. 240 millimeter radiator on top of that. It's got a fan for the VRM section. <sighs> I think we're good to go. All right, I'm tired. Uh, I still have to build this thing, don't I? Okay, let's do that. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by Keeps. Keeps is the leading name when it comes to hair loss prevention for men. Unfortunately, two out of three guys will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35, but Keeps offers the best line of defense by letting you take action while you still have your hair left. You can also skip any embarrassing in-person visits by seeing a doctor online and get your medication delivered right to your home every three months for utmost convenience. Keeps also offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there, which makes them safe, effective, and affordable. Since it can take up to six months before you start seeing results, it's highly recommended that you start treatments sooner than later for the best chance of saving the most hair possible. Keeps has worked for millions of men over the years, and it can work for you too. So if you want to save your hair, the best time to act is now. For a limited time only, go to keeps.com bitwit, or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this one. Now back to the main video. All right, here she is. Yeah, all right. So uh, she looks really good. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I'm usually happy with how they turn out aesthetically. So speaking of that, why don't we talk about aesthetics first and then we'll work our way from there. So uh, as you can see, it's nice and tidy. I cleaned it up pretty nice. Cable management looks good. The backside of the cable management, however, isn't the greatest because uh, full disclosure, I don't really spend a whole lot of time doing cable management on my personal rigs. Uh, and the reason for that being is because I usually have to dig in uh, to them often. I usually have to either replace fans or swap things out, do little upgrades here and there. So I generally don't like tying every little thing down because it just takes me more time when I have to undo things and uninstall things and reinstall things and I have to retie them. So you can see I've got a lot of like loose cables, particularly with like uh, the RGB cables, some fan cables. Some things are tied down, like a 24 pin here. Um, but uh, for the most part, I keep things loose in my personal build, so that's why it looks a little messy, uh, but it works for me. Um, so let's go back around here. So back back to the front, cable management on this side looks good, nice and neat. And one thing I've been doing with the uh, the Asia Horse sleeve cables is I've actually been using some of the cable combs that are supposed to be for the 24 pin ATX cable, and I've been using them for any graphics cards that have triple eight pin connectors, like this guy right here. And that just gives it a more unified look, brings all the cables together. Instead of having three individual cable combs going all the way across, this looks way cleaner in my opinion, so uh, that's what I've been doing. Just a little pro tip there. Uh, you can see the GPU is looking pretty good. No sag whatsoever because I'm using this little sag bracket that came along with the uh, the motherboard actually. It came included with the motherboard, uh, which was a nice touch. I wasn't expecting that, but it's working out pretty nicely. I think in the future, I may actually mount this vertically though, because if you notice, it's it's a little bland on the front here. I mean, it still looks nice. The top has no RGB. There's a little bit of RGB on the, uh, the ROG i logo here, but it's kind of faint. It's not super bright or vibrant. Most of the RGB goodness is down below, right on this side. So you can see this whole area right here is completely lit up. Looks really cool too. And you've got, of course, the uh, uh, the blower style fan right there. And I could have potentially mounted it vertically in this case today because the 4000X does have these vertical uh, mounting slots right there. However, it doesn't come included with a, a riser cable. Uh, you have to buy that separately from Corsair um, or you just have to have one. I don't have a PCIe Gen 4 riser cable on hand. I have a few of them that are in existing builds strewn across the office here, but uh, nothing that's available for this rig. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is 
is buy one of those cable mod uh, cages, uh, the riser cables, the vertical riser cable from cable mod, which actually makes use of your existing expansion slots, the horizontal expansion slots, and that allows you to actually bring the GPU further back away from the tempered glass side panel. Because if we did it with, uh, if I used it with these ones, with the uh, the, the vertical slots here, uh, the blower style fan would be right up against the glass and that would obviously choke our airflow pretty significantly. Uh, we'd probably see some higher VRM temps and stuff like that. So maybe that's something I'll do in the future so we can actually show off what I think is the nicest looking side of this card. Uh, but the card itself is pretty beastly. It's looking awesome nonetheless. You can see I kind of took the hoses and I tied them actually to the back of uh, this expansion slot right here. You can see a zip tie right there. It just kind of brings them to the side, makes them uh, just kind of hide in the back of the case there. Otherwise they'd be hanging out and kind of actually up against the glass uh, if they were just like roaming free. And that doesn't look super nice. Kind of looks like a bit of a rat's nest. And also you can see the hoses are going up to the left side. I actually put the hoses on the left side of the case. I couldn't actually flip the radiator around. If I did that, then these hoses would actually be really close and interfering with the hoses on our AIO. And that would also look pretty hairy. So this was the way to go, I think. Just having both hoses in opposite corners of the case. And it works really well. There's, it doesn't look cluttered and there's tons of space still. Sometimes when you have two AIOs, one in your CPU and your GPU in the same build, it can look a little messy, but uh, I managed to make it look fairly clean here. Uh, we also have the AIO itself uh, on, on the CPU. Our CPU cooler is looking really nice. Liquid temp is 30 degrees Celsius at the moment. That's just liquid temp, not CPU temp, a uh, big difference. And we'll take a closer look at temperatures in just a moment, but really liking how this looks. Again, this is my first time using the H150i uh, IQ uh, with the LCD screen and stuff. And I think it looks really nice. Also, this is kind of a weird effect. It looks like this, the, the RGB on the motherboard here is like synth wave color, like pink and teal, but that's actually just how it looks when it's reflecting the light, the white light off of this fan here. Because if we go to this angle where there's no more reflection, you can see it's it's clearly white, but I think just uh, the way that the uh, the light is ref refracting or whatever, it's making it a little bit synth wavy, but uh, that's not necessarily what's going on there. In case you guys are curious, I'm actually controlling all of the RGB lighting in the system with a single application, which is Corsair IQ. So if you look over here, we've got IQ open, the motherboard, the GPU, uh, our lighting node core, which has all six of our L series 120 millimeter fans on it, as well as the, the AIO pump block. All those devices are being controlled with a singular app, which is very handy. And you can see over here, I've actually uh, occupied both of our USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard. So one of those is the, the AIO. The AIO technically plugs in to this guy. This comes included, the, uh, the IQ Commander Core, um, which has six four pin PWM fan headers, as well as six RGB headers uh, for supported devices. But you can see I'm not using those because I actually plugged all six of our RGB fans into this, which is the built-in lighting node uh, that comes included with the 4000X uh, chassis, which is super handy, especially if you're gonna be decking it out with some Corsair RGB fans like I am. So that's why uh, all these are empty and stuff. And this of course is what's being plugged into the other USB 2.0 header that's on our motherboard. So. Oh, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. I want to say anything else about the hardware here. Oh yeah, one quick note about the ROG Z690E gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Uh, it's it's an awesome board. The VRM is super solid, very reliable, super stable. Um, but one thing that I, I thought was really cool and pretty unique was this quick release button that actually uh, pops out the graphics card. So instead of actually having to press down the latch or that tab in order to pull it out of the PCIe slot, you just press that uh, that button. And it's got like a little wire that connects to that, uh, that latch and it just pulls it back so that you can easily pop it out. So I no longer have to get like a plastic knife out and, and jam it in there in order to get the GPU out, which uh, was a, a pro tip that I learned from Paul back in the day. Uh, I wonder if he's still doing it that way, but I know I am, but I won't have to on this build because of that board. So that's a nice feature. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about temperatures, shall we? Uh, my battery's about to die. Hold on, let me swap batteries. Okay, we're back. So right now the system has been idling for about 30 minutes or so. Uh, all the heat is completely out, although I don't have the side panels on. The side panels haven't been on for about 30 minutes. Uh, that's both side panels panels left and right. So assume that these temperatures would be probably a couple degrees higher if both of those side panels were on. But still, uh, very impressive results that we're seeing here on the CPU package. We're getting around 26 degrees Celsius. That's the current temperature. I uh, just spiked up to 28 with a maximum of 29. I just cleared this a few minutes ago. So uh, this is probably going to be higher. I think I saw it go as high as 40 C at, at some point, but that's kind of an outlier. It's mostly been hovering around 29 to 32 C, which is very nice to see on our 12900K. Oh, by the way, while we're here, uh, memory clock 2600 double 
double that because double data rate, of course, and we are operating at the rated 5200 megahertz on our DDR5 memory. That's also nice to see. And then RTX 3080 Ti currently idling at 29.5C. That's the current value with a maximum of 29.7. I think I saw that go up to maybe 35, 36 at its hottest while idling. Why don't we go ahead and jump into a game and I'll play that for about 15, 20 minutes, get the system nice and heat soaked, make sure the side panels are on the whole time this time around, and then we'll go ahead and check out what our load temps are looking like. All right, Halo Infinite, here we go. You know, I was trying to actually launch Red Dead Redemption 2 earlier because it's a, it's a bit more of a demanding game than this one and it also looks really pretty, but I was having issues with uh, Rockstar Launcher for some reason. The, the game kept crashing, and then every time I would try to, I'd have to reset, I'd have to reboot, and then anytime I'd try to relaunch the game, it would say that it couldn't find the install. So I have to reinstall Launcher and, and figure it out later, but for now we have Halo Infinite, which is, uh, the hottest title. And we're gaming at 1440p right now, 2560 by 1440 at ultra settings, completely maxed out across the board. V-Sync is off, of course, and we're getting a lovely 140-ish, 150 FPS. That's uh, bound to dip here and there, depending on the scene. But uh, we're getting well over 100 FPS on average, which is fantastic to see at these settings. Temps-wise, you can see our GPU is currently hitting around 65, 66C, and uh, that's, that's really nice, especially since we're at nearly 100% utilization at around 1950 megahertz on the core clock, uh, pulling about 380 watts from the wall thereabouts. So very nice temperatures for sure that radiator is doing its job. The L series fans are actually not too bad on radiators, even though they're not, they're not really marketed as radiator fans. I've done a lot of testing with them in the past, uh, use them on plenty of radiators and, and personal builds, and temperatures have always been pretty good with them. Our CPU is staying nice and cool as well, although that's to be expected because this title isn't super CPU bound. You can see utilization's only around 30% on our 12900K. I haven't overclocked it at all yet. I know there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's, I don't know, there's a few different schools of thought with overclocking on, on Alder Lake. Uh, people haven't been seeing great results, and those that do actually get decent results are having a hard time keeping the chip cool, um, stability issues and all that. But, um, so we're just running stock right now. You can see that we're hovering around 400, or I'm sorry, 4880 megahertz and getting around 45 degrees Celsius on average. Oh, did I just, no, I, I didn't kill that guy. Dang it. I'm like hardly even watching the game. Sorry, teammates. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. Why? No, he's got the hammer. Go away. Get the ball. Oh my god, I'm making a video. I'm making a video. Why did I do that? Oh god, I can't. Sorry. Sorry about that. I'm a failure. Um, but uh, yes, good CPU temps, good GPU temps, eating up about eight gigs of RAM. Uh, so it's a good thing we've got 32 gigs in here. If uh, if I ever do stream with this system, I'm definitely going to need a bit more than 16 gigs of RAM. Um, and, and, and for you know background applications, that sort of thing. So overall, very happy with the system, how it's performing. It looks uh, like there's no red flags. Although I do have to figure out what's going on with Rockstar Launcher. And hopefully that's just a Rockstar thing and not uh, a PC thing. But um, I'll figure it out later. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to do a follow-up video where I actually set this thing up in my home office right next to the all-white build, all, uh, the all-white setup really, and, uh, and maybe even do some start to do some decor for the home office because it's pretty blank in there right now. So uh, stay tuned for that. Have a good one. Subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys very soon in the next one.